Hello and welcome. In this video, we will be discussing the demand phase of the case. So, let's quickly go over where we've been and where we're going. So everything starts with a consultation. Then we send documents for you to sign so that we can represent you. After that, we send an initial packet of documents to the other side to put them on notice of the claim and to get the relevant insurance information. Then we go through the pre-suit phase of the case, where we investigate the case, you get medical treatment, then we work to obtain medical records and bills, and we work to obtain medical liens. After you've gotten the medical treatment you need, and once we have received medical records and bills, we can prepare a demand letter and send it to the other side. After that, we can enter into negotiations, and then the case will either settle or we may need to file a lawsuit and proceed into litigation. So, let's talk more about the demand phase of the case. So what is a demand letter? A demand letter, which we sometimes refer to as a demand package, is a set of documents that we send to the person responsible for your injuries or their insurance company to demand compensation in an effort to settle your personal injury case. Note that we can send a demand letter before or after we file a lawsuit. However, in the context of this video, we're talking about a pre-suit demand letter. So here's how the demand process works. We will prepare a demand letter and compile evidence to support your claim. Then we will send the demand letter and supporting documents to the defense with an offer to settle your case. After that, the defense will review the demand letter and the supporting documents. Then, the defense will either accept the demand, reject it, or provide us with a counteroffer. Now that we understand what a demand letter is and how it works, let's talk about the purpose of sending a demand letter. First off, the demand letter kicks off the negotiation process by providing the other side with an offer to settle. The demand letter also gives the parties a chance to settle the case and avoid litigation. This approach has several benefits. For one, it can save money, because if we can avoid extensive litigation and heavy case costs, we may be able to put more money in your pocket. Also, it can save time. Litigation can drag on for years before a case goes to trial. However, by sending a demand letter, we may be able to resolve your case much faster. It can also reduce stress. If we can resolve your case without a lengthy legal battle, you can put the case behind you and move on with your life. Finally, it can eliminate uncertainty because if we can settle your case and get you money for your claim, you don't have to leave everything up to a jury that may or may not sympathize with you and may or may not award you money. The demand letter also forces the other side to evaluate the case and make some progress. It puts the ball in the insurance company's court because, once they receive our demand, they have a responsibility to respond to our offer, which moves your case forward. Finally, a demand letter can put serious pressure on the other side to settle because it serves as proof that we attempted to settle the case. This is important in the context of a bad faith claim. So, let's talk about bad faith for a minute using a hypothetical situation. That way, you can understand how a demand might put pressure on the other side to settle a case. Let's say Victor Victim sues negligent Ned after a car accident. Let's say Ned has bodily injury coverage to the tune of $50,000. Now, let's say we send a demand to the insurance company on Victor's behalf for $50,000, which is within policy limits. Then, let's say Ned's insurance company refuses to settle the case within policy limits. After that, let's say the case goes to trial and the jury awards Victor a verdict over the policy limits. Let's say they award him $100,000. Now, Ned could be personally responsible for the amount of the judgment that exceeded the policy limits, which is $50,000. In this situation, Ned could potentially sue his own insurance company for acting in bad faith by not protecting him from this financial risk when they had the opportunity to settle a case with Victor within policy limits. Ultimately, and this is the key, 
insurance companies have a duty to deal with their policyholders in good faith. So, if an insurance company gets a demand within policy limits and then fails to settle the case, this could constitute a breach of duty and it could spell trouble for them later on. In this way, a demand puts a formal settlement offer on the record and that puts pressure on the other side. Now, let's talk about the components of a demand letter. The demand letter will typically have several main components, including a description of the incident, like how the incident happened, when it happened, where it happened, and who was involved. A discussion of liability, which could include a discussion about why we believe the defendant is legally responsible, and citations to the law that supports our position. A discussion of damages, which could include information about your medical treatment, your diagnosed injuries, physical limitations, medical bills, lost wages, and how your injuries have affected your life. A discussion of insurance coverage and the applicable insurance policy limits. A demand for payment, which is an offer to settle the case for a specific amount of money. A deadline for a response, which gives the defense a specific amount of time to respond. The demand letter will also include supporting documents, like medical records, medical bills, police reports if the case involved a motor vehicle, incident reports for cases involving premises liability, lost wages documentation, and any other evidence that might help support our demand for payment. Now, let's talk about how we determine how much money to demand. Ultimately, every case is unique, and so we have to assess the value of a given case based upon a number of factors. Let's talk about some of the more critical factors we consider when we're coming up with a dollar amount to demand. First and foremost, we look at the available insurance coverage. The policy limits often set the ceiling for what we can realistically expect to recover in a case, because that's usually the only money that's available. The severity of your injuries play a significant role in determining case value. For example, cases involving catastrophic injuries that permanently affect your life will generally justify a higher demand than less severe injuries. Another major factor is the cost of medical treatment. In fact, your medical bills are often one of the more important factors to insurance companies when they're valuing your claim. Liability is another major consideration. In other words, we look at the behavior of those responsible for your injuries. If the negligence is obvious and egregious, like drunk driving, it can lead to a higher case value compared to situations where liability is less clear. We also look at the value of similar cases. The insurance company will often review settlements and verdicts for cases that are similar to yours when they're determining the value of your case. We have access to verdict and settlement databases, and we will use this information to help guide our decision. The final factor we'll talk about is you. Our job is to perform an in-depth analysis so that we can provide you with information and recommendations. But ultimately, the decision about how much to demand is yours. Now, let's talk about how long the demand phase will last. We'll start out by talking about how long it takes to prepare the demand. Once we have all the medical records, the medical bills, and other supporting documents that we need, it usually takes about one month to prepare a thorough, well-crafted demand. However, obtaining complete medical records and final medical bills can cause serious delays. Ultimately, the extent of the delay will depend on the medical provider and when you finish treating with them. Now, let's talk about the time it takes to send the demand. Once we prepare the demand and send it out, the other side will typically receive it within the week. The time it takes for us to get a response from the other side will depend on the deadline we provided in the demand letter. Typically, we must give the other side 30 days to review the demand and respond. However, sometimes the insurance company may request an extension to respond, or they may request updated records, and this can cause some delays. Now, let's talk about the defense's response and the next steps. The defense will usually respond to the demand in one of three ways. They'll accept the demand, they'll reject the demand, or 
they'll give us a counteroffer. If they accept the demand, the case is settled, and after that, we can work to close it out. If they reject the demand outright, we may need to file a lawsuit and push the case into litigation. If they give us a counteroffer, we can move into negotiations and attempt to reach a settlement. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call us at 321 Lawsuit. That's 321 529 7848. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.